I don't suppose anyone can get tired of the story of the prodigal son. And at the climax of the story, we read these beautiful words. This is Luke 15, verse 20. We read that the prodigal arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the word there really means he kissed him and kissed him and kissed him. He covered him in kisses. And uh, this beautiful picture told by the Lord Jesus himself regarding the way God treats a prodigal, it, it abhorred the older brother. He's like, is this any way to treat a prodigal? He was angry and would not go in. But the fact is we're all prodigals in that sense. We've all wandered away from him. And the father keeps watching down the road and he is eager. This is the only time we see the father running. In other words, God is slow to anger, but he's ready to pardon. He's in a hurry to pardon. And I want to tell you a little story about um, a prodigal coming home. Robert Harkness, uh, who was born in the late 1800s, he died in 1961 uh, when I was 10 years old, but uh, he's a famous musician, Christian musician. He wrote the hymn, He Will Hold Me Fast, and uh, Love Sent My Savior to Die in My Place, and so on. And he worked with um, the Tory Alexander gospel team for a number of years, and it was while he was with Tory and Alexander in Britain, he was in Manchester, England, and uh, the scripture was being preached there in Manchester in November of 1903. And uh, Ari Tari was preaching the gospel. And after the afternoon session, a lady came up to Harkness and gave him an envelope and said, uh, would you read the verses that are in there? Perhaps you can set this to music. And so right away, Harkness opened up the envelope and he began to read these words. I tried in vain a thousand ways, my fears to quell, my hopes to raise. But what I need, the Bible says, is ever only Jesus. And he said to her, my dear lady, this is a very unusual text. Where did you get it? And she began to tell the story. She said that uh, she and her brother had been raised in a God-fearing home and they regularly attended church services. They had family prayer together. But uh, even though he had grown up in this environment, in his early teens, he began to read the writings of the free thinkers of his day. And eventually, he abandoned any faith in the scriptures that he had had, and uh, he joined the free thinker society there in Manchester and eventually became their president. It was kind of like um, a Richard Dawkins of his day, the president of the Freethinker Society. Well, it was actually during these days as he wrestled with these issues that he wrote these words. My soul is night, my heart is steel. I cannot see, I cannot feel. For light, for life, I must appeal in simple faith to Jesus. He realized that there are only two options. And option number one is to believe what God says. And the other option is a black hole. If Jesus isn't the Savior, there is no Savior. There's no other Savior in any religious system. If there's no Savior, we can't save ourselves. We can't even meet our own standards, let alone God's. And if that's the case, there's no hope. And that's what the Bible says, that those who are without Christ are without hope and without God in the world. And so he came to realize this, and he went through a very serious illness. And uh, while he was in his sickbed, he asked to see a minister to come and to share the gospel with him. And this man of God was very wise asked him lots of questions, quoted him scriptures, and uh, there on his sickbed, 
he cried out to God for mercy. He began to get better, and his sister described how one afternoon he was in the bed, and she was sitting by his bedside, and he said to her, Sister, would you go over to that old bureau there and look through some papers, and you'll find a sheet with two verses of a poem on it. I want to finish the text. And so the first two stanzas, which he had written as he was struggling with this whole issue of infidelity, I tried in vain a thousand ways, and then my soul is night, my heart is steel. And then she took the paper, and, and with a pen, he began to dictate the last two stanzas. And what a dramatic difference. Listen, he died, he lives, he reigns, he pleads. There's love in all his words and deeds. There's all a guilty sinner needs forevermore in Jesus. Though some should sneer and some should blame, I'll go with all my guilt and shame. I'll go to him because his name above all names is Jesus. And uh, Robert Harkness wrote the music for that piece. And God has used it powerfully in the lives of many people as they hear the testimony of this man, the president of the Free Thinker Society, who realized in his heart that in the end, there's nothing but hopeless despair. And like the prodigal sitting in the pigsty, uh, when he had money, he had friends, 50 cent friends. When the money was gone, the friends were gone, the party's over. And sitting there in the pigsty, he realized everything I need to satisfy me is back there at the father's house. And so I think those of us who have prodigal brothers, prodigal sons or grandsons, whatever it might be, prodigal friends or others that we know, our prayer might be that God who works with them and brings them to the end of themselves, that's what we read, he came to himself, he came to the realization that in that moment, as they realize the destitute nature of their own soul, the emptiness that they have within, that they'll have happy thoughts about the Father's house, that they'll remember the days when, perhaps in their childhood or their youth, they were deeply moved within at thoughts of the love of God, at the sacrifice of Christ, at the hope of heaven, at the the bread and to spare that is in the Father's house, and that they'll head homeward and know what it is for the Father to run to them and cover them in kisses.